Good afternoon, guys. How we doing? Decided to finally get to the barbershop, tighten myself up. I didn't like the fact that I was looking like a grizzly bear earlier, but it is Friday, getting ready for the weekend, and so I had to go to the barbershop, make sure. And no, I am not driving. See, the cars are moving past me. I'm parked. Um, I want to jump on real quick, because I know I said next week I'm going to talk about my books. And my most recent book, From Gigolo to Jesus, is my memoir. And I've been reading different articles that actually had talked about should you or shouldn't you write a memoir and things like that. I am going to tell you this from my own professional point of view. And I have not been a professional writer that long, a little under 10 years. I felt that my memoir was needed. And the title of my memoir is called From Gigolo to Jesus. Um, I felt my memoir was needed because I knew my testimony of my transformation from a misogynistic man to the man I am now was going to help someone as well as hopefully explain some of the women that I had been with who assisted me in doing some of the things that I was doing to them. And so I decided, um, it's real unprofessional. I have gum in my mouth. I'm sorry. I decided to write my memoir. Now you will see professionals that will say, if you're under a certain age, you shouldn't write a memoir. If you haven't done X, Y, and Z, you shouldn't write a memoir. Listen, if you believe that you have enough or have had enough go on in your life that you believe is interesting, that tells a story, that shows some type of transformation that is going to move someone, then you write. And you write from your heart. You tell your story. Now understand, when you shop it, if you're deciding to go the traditional publishing route, you may not get a look. When you shop for an agent and try to convince an agent to take on your work, it may be very difficult. That does not mean that the book should not be written. You have to feel it before you sit down. I'm, I'm serious about this. I know there's a lot of this books written every day. It's books written every couple of hours. But with a memoir, you have to believe that there's something there, whether it's juicy, whether it's scandalous, whatever. You have to believe that what you're about to put down, someone else, when they pick up, is going to find it difficult to put down. You have to make sure that the story that you are telling is compelling in some way. Grip somebody in some way. But don't embellish. Don't make things up. Because then you should just go ahead and write fiction. I felt the type of life I lived as a misogynistic man whose life was centered on sexual conquest. To finally get past that and turn my life around and to give my life to the Lord, become a loving husband and those things was necessary for me to put that down. And the crazy part is I think well, I wrote it in 2011. Since then, there's at least two things that I want to add, which I plan to. Actually, I'm, I had the book re-edited and I'm, I'm going to add to it because there's two pieces that I believe have to be in it now for it to be complete. And that is the birth of my lovely daughter, K.L., and the passing of my lovely grandmother, Christina Watkins. Those two things are needed for me to say that's the complete picture. I thought at the time it was. And then when I rethought it, I said, I'm not changing that much. I just need to add that so you can actually see where I started to where I am. And that's it. But to anyone considering writing their memoir, stop and say, why is somebody going to read this? Is this going to help? Is this going to capture them? Well, you should think about those things before you write anything, but especially a memoir, because people just don't want to read about your life for the sake of reading it. There's so much on television. There's so much out there. How is someone going to benefit from reading about your life? How is someone going to be helped by reading about your life? How is somebody going to learn something new about themselves, about the world, about you? that's going to capture their interest in reading about your life. And if you can't come up with those answers, don't do it. But if you believe that your story is strong, get the writing. Get behind your computer and write. Get it out there. 
do not be fearful. I, I'm not fearful when I write because I write from here. And I have had the blessing that I've had people say, I love your book. And I've had some people say, I hate your book. Actually, I get a kick out of bad reviews. I haven't had that many, but I get a kick out of them because you still bought the book. I'm not mad that you gave me a bad review. I haven't had that many. And actually, if you go on Amazon from Gigolo to Jesus, I believe all of my reviews, I think it's 20. Not a lot. But of the 20, I think the lowest one I got is 3.5 and all the rest are four or five star reviews. I'm cool with that because I don't stress reviews because I know what my book has done for other people. I know what people have come to me and said, my husband, my brother, my cousin, my, my, my nephew, my girlfriend. I've had women come and say, I was one of those women in your book that would allow men to do the same thing to me. And I've had those conversations. I've seen it. And have I made money? Yes. Black Expressions had my book listed. They gave me $1,000 up front. And then they went on, signed a contract, and it was whatever. And I had people ask me, how did you get into Black Expressions? Well, that's another scope for another day. So there my book was in Ebony Magazine and, 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 and um, Essence Magazine. I was part of Black Expressions Book Club. Fine. But I don't care where the book went. I just knew when I sat down and wrote it, I had something to say. And I still have things to say. But if you're going to write a memoir, ask yourself those questions. So, I hope this helps. Got myself looking halfway decent again. <laughs> it's time to hit the streets. I got to go pick up the wife and the baby and time to relax. This is my last weekend before I return to school and get ready for year number 19 in the educational system. 19 years, wow. But uh, this is going to be a different year. I'm a floating sub this year, so I don't know what that's going to be, but I'm excited to see what that's going to be like. So, it's a new transition to an old story, so... We'll definitely talk to each other again, and I normally don't scope twice in a day, so I doubt I'm going to jump back on a third time. Have a wonderful day, evening, and have a wonderful weekend. Be safe and take care. This is KL Belvin. I'm out.